Okay, so let's talk about what's going on with our third example. So we've changed a couple little things. What's not going to change, uh, not only with this example, but with our last one, as with the other two, is the harmony is exactly the same. And not only is the harmony the same uh, with regard to the diatonic progression, but the voicings we're using are also identical. So this is just to prove to you guys like what you can do with little tweaks here and there, changing little elements here and there. Uh, keep in mind, this example, same uh, harmonic progression as the other two, and same exact voicings on top of that. What we have changed are two crucial elements, uh, that is the key and the tempo. So the key we're using here is E flat minor. Uh, we used it just because we liked the way it sounded. Um, you may not have an inclination towards one key or another with regard to, oh, I like that the way that sounds over, I like it in F minor more than I like it in C minor. But you'll never know unless you like explore different keys. So we would encourage you to try, if you have a melody or an idea, try it over here, then try it over there, and just compare and contrast to see if you have a, a favorite. Uh, another approach is uh, maybe you want to use E flat minor because it's not a key you're used to. And this is a good opportunity to familiarize yourself with that key because it's in the world of music. You're going to see it whether you like it or not, whether you like or don't like weird enharmonics like C flat or double flats. Uh, they're unavoidable. So on top of like using this as an exercise and writing your own stuff and, and figuring out how to do your own thing, you could also try to use it as an exercise to play in a key that you're maybe not familiar with and that will make you a bit more well-rounded. So having said that, we chose E flat minor uh, just because we liked the way it sounded and we also, like I said before, changed the tempo. So this is a bit more uh, subdued and laid back and because it's slower, it's allowed us to do more things on the left hand uh, rhythmically. So instead of just playing quarter notes, what you're gonna hear in the example is a more arpeggiated approach to the chords, more rhythm involved. It's also allowed us to incorporate some more um, urgent rhythms on the right hand too. So like we said before, you can hear in the left hand the arpeggiated or broken chord approach that our new tempo has allowed us to kind of, because this would kind of, I don't know, I guess you could do that, but it just doesn't kind of fill in those gaps that our, our new tempo has uh, created for us. So um, it's not too busy, they're just quarter notes, but that new tempo has allowed us to do that. Uh, we have the same sort of stuff we talked about in examples one and two also with regard to the sequence, specifically example one, because that we have this sequence later on in, in, the, in the arrangement and it uses the same diatonic from above, chromatic from below uh, approach. That whole run on measure five through, measures five through eight is exactly that. So you're seeing a lot of the same elements that we talked about in one and two with slight uh, changes to the tempo and the key, and because the tempo has changed, we're also doing stuff different rhythmically because we can, all right? Not because we have to, but because it's cool and we like it. So keep that in mind too as you're moving forward that if you like it, do it. If you don't, then don't. I know it seems a bit reductive to say that, but ultimately it's your arrangement and these are just tricks that we're showing you to help you kind of like find your voice. So there's no right or wrong way, so to speak, to do it. Um, so having said that, let's get into example four, our last one, and we'll show you what we're talking about with that. Okay, so here's our fourth and final example that uses all the harmony and the elements that we've previously gone through through examples one through three. So we're gonna change the key again. We're gonna to go to E minor, uh, just because. And then we're also gonna do something that was really kind of uh, integral to what developed here. And that's changed the meter over to 6-8. So we still have a pulse of two beats per measure in 6-8, right? You don't wanna really think of it as da 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 where you're emphasizing every beat. So it's still in spirit, uh, the same as the other three examples. You have a one, two, one, 
two on one, two, three, four, five, six. It's just the way the beats are now divided into groups of three as opposed uh, to two, or an odd division as opposed to an even division. That really kind of makes six, eight, six, eight. But keep in mind the pulse is still two beats per measure. So this is important because it's afforded us some really cool opportunities, especially with regard to the left hand. So let's just take a listen to it now before I go any further so you can hear kind of what I'm talking about as I'm talking about it. So right away, uh, you can probably hear that on the right hand, it's probably one of the simpler uh, iterations of the theme that we've come up with. And that kind of is because what we were just talking about in example three, we were just saying in example three because it's a slower tempo, you can probably be a bit busier because six eight is a bit more frenetic and a bit more upbeat. You really have kind of a more simple approach to the melody, right? And that's uh, sort of a byproduct of how fast we're going, the meter we're playing in, and the intrinsic rhythms usually associated with 6-8. So that right away might be obvious. Um, another thing that's happening, uh, what really kind of helped uh, this piece along, and the dialogue between the left hand and the right hand was this sort of hemiola that we've created on the left hand. So the left hand could have gone in a myriad of different directions. We could have gone just straight up one, two, three, four, five, six. We could have broken that up however we wanted. Or. But by dividing the notes into groups of two, we've created this hemiola effect, which is when you accentuate certain beats of a measure to kind of disguise what the real meter is. So we have two on the right hand and three on the left hand. Dia, dia, dia. So because of that two note pairing on the left hand, we have this hemiola effect of the right hand pulsing twice per measure and the left hand pulsing three times per measure. So that's a really cool effect that's created. And I might not have seen that in two four or two two. I might not have developed that or gotten there unless I changed the meter, all right? So none of this was really intentional. The intent has already been laid out for us, right? The harmony is identical to the other three. Um, the voicings we're using are essentially identical to the other three also. So where we're going isn't really something we have to think about. So this end product that we have is sort of uh, an evolution. It was something that was developed. It wasn't something like we dived into intentionally. It's, we're gonna do this dialogue between the left hand and the right hand. It was something that came about and we evolved and might not have gotten there if it wasn't for the fact that we just changed the meter to six, eight, right? So this dialogue that you see between the right hand and the left hand, for example, all right, that probably, well, it actually didn't happen because we did it three times in other, in other time signatures and that never came about, right? The right, 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 left, left, right, 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 left, left, right. And then the call and response getting flipped around in measures five through eight, you know, the left hand being the question and the right hand being the response. These are all consequences of us looking at it from a different perspective changing the time signature, changing the tempo, doing different things, and keeping in mind all the other elements we talked about, because those are still there. We're still sequencing, we're still breaking chords to create the melody. We're still using the same harmony, we're still using the same progression. So this just goes to show, like, if you tweak little things like the tempo or the time signature, a completely different product may come out uh, on the other side in the end. All right guys, so there you have it. I hope that was helpful. Those are our four ideas that we came up with using all the same harmony, all the same voicings, and a lot of the same elemental techniques. Uh, so like we said before, feel free to come up with your own versions of what we're talking about. If you submit it to us, we'll review it, give you some free notes about what you're doing and what we think about what you're doing. So please feel free to do that. Highly encourage you to do so. Stick around for our next video where we're gonna delve more into uh, the sonata form and how we're gonna develop this A theme that we've already analyzed, all right? Well, thanks for watching. If you feel like it, hit that subscribe button. Thank you.